Hi, everybody. It is May 29th, Monday, start of a new week. Um, before I go on, two things. I want to thank everybody so much for the uh, the birthday wishes uh, that came in yesterday. It's, it's humbling to see so many nice comments and then some of the other ones I get to. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Um, it was, it's really sweet. One of the things I've enjoyed ever since being on Facebook is, is sending out birthday wishes every, every single day out to the people that come up uh, on my feed whose birthday it is that day. So when I suddenly get to be at the backside of that whole thing and have the uh, it reciprocal, uh, it's, it's very sweet. Thank you so much. Also, today would have been, I miss him so much, today would have been Mike Picaro's birthday. And Mike was such a dear friend, as was Jeff, the whole Picaro family. Um, but Mike was, was quite a guy, quite a musician, quite a dear friend. And so every time my birthday comes, I know his, his is following me the next day. Um, and also my, my great friend, Willie Ornelas, who's one of my favorite drummers to play with. Today's his birthday, too. We used to, between Willie and Mike Baird, uh, they did all the drumming for all, most all the Mike Post TV shows. And we've done all kinds of uh, gigs together and stuff. And, and Willie's just uh, a hoot. And then I've got album projects t tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. I just finished... I spent my birthday, I, I cleaned the garage, just it needed it really bad. So I cleaned the garage, um, cleaned out a potting shed, and cleaned the potting shed, got rid of all the vermin in there and all kinds of stuff and got rid of stuff that was spent. And then this morning so far, I've cleaned my laundry room. I mean, a woman's work is never done. And uh, as soon as I finish this, I am going to wash the kitchen floor. So... You know, I know how to I know how to party. I know how to have a good time. <clears throat> but um, you know, just thinking about all these different people and stuff, it's all it was kind of mind blowing. Anxious to uh, for uh, for the eighth to get here, so Denny Tedesco and I can load his car up with books and head to Modesto for a book signing and the screening of the immediate family documentary. That'll be that'll be fun. We'll have our Thelma and Louise road trip together. Just hopefully there won't be any cliffs in, in, involved in this one. And then we're sneaking up on uh, Lyle's, uh, the start of Lyle's tour. So uh, later on today, I'm going to pack my road case because they're picking it up on the 1st uh, to ship it uh, back east uh, to start the tour. So I'm going to get all my amps and bases tweaked out and everything and load it all up and get that over with. And... Uh, so that's it. So I think I'll, I'll I'll do a little bit of music here. Again, today is officially Memorial Day. Um, I talked about it Memorial Day yesterday, um, but today is the official observance, and uh, it's such a it's such a hard day because it really represents so much loss uh, to humanity. You know, when you when you think about warfare and just the the, the cost in in human, animal, you know, human lives, animal lives, all this. It's so much, such a negative experience for humanity, for something that, um, and I've said it many times, we're here for such a short period of time and for people's lives to be consumed by misery and warfare and death. You know, and I think back to my father's generation and, you know, fighting, you know, fascism and Nazism and all the, 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 the cost that, that they expended trying to hold this at bay and make the world a better place. And here we are now in America with these maniacs out marching the streets and, uh, and raising hell in this country. You know, it's, it's just it's beyond heartbreaking that the, all that went into trying to fight this. And here it is now in our land. And uh, it's... Uh, it just breaks my heart every day. This just is an ugliness that's overtaken things that I wish would disappear. That's why I love to focus on my music and and just trying to make a, a yard look nice for the neighbors around me and myself and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm going to do another project today, but I'm, let me take a quick look here. I might throw up something just to... Hold 
Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Today I, I I've been discovering a whole bunch of other albums I didn't work that I didn't remember working on. So um, so today I'm going to visit a singer that I worked with um, named Arnold George Dorsey, um, professionally known as Engelbert Humperdinck. And it's, here's a little bio here for those that aren't that familiar, even though with a name like his, he's been a part of our um, vernacular for, for decades and stuff. I'm still going at it. But it's Arnold George Dorsey, MBE, born May 2nd, 1936, known professionally as Engelbert Humperdinck, is a British pop singer who has been described as one of the finest middle-of-the-road balladeers around. He achieved international prominence in 1967 with his recording of Release Me. Starting as a performer in the late 1950s under the name Jerry Dorsey, he later adopted the name of German composer Engelbert Humperdinck as a stage name and found success after he partnered with manager Gordon Mills in 1965. His recording of ballads Release Me and The Last Waltz both topped the UK singles charts in 67, selling more than a million copies each. Humperdinck scored further major hits in rapid succession, including There Goes Mr. Everything, uh, am I uh, that easy to forget in Man Without Love? In the process, he attained a large following with some of his most devoted fans calling themselves Humperdinkers. <laughs> Three of his singles were amongst the best selling of the 1960s in the UK. Um, and then it goes on, talks about uh, he, uh, he was born in Madras, uh, British India, and uh, in 1936, he was one of 10 children to British Army NCO Mervyn Dorsey who was of Welsh descent, and his wife, Olive, who, according to the singer, was of German descent. Uh, various sources say that he was Anglo-Indian heritage. His family moved to Leicester, England, when he was 10 years old. He later showed an interest in music and began learning the saxophone. By the 1950s, he was playing saxophone in nightclubs, but he is believed not to have begun singing until he was in his late teens. His impression of Jerry Lewis prompted friends to begin calling him uh, Jerry Dorsey, a name that he worked under for almost a decade. Now, this goes on and on, talks about his career, later life, blah, blah, blah. Let me get down and see if there's anything that'll... Because this is, to me, every one of these artists that I do on here is worth looking up. Um, they are, they've all traveled remarkable journeys, and, uh, and it's well worth, to me, anybody that aspires to anything to study other people's lives, just to see the, the journey they traveled that maybe can help facilitate a little bit better uh, journey for yourself. You might be able to like overcome some things where you were thinking this, this can't work out for me. And then you suddenly find out somebody who you admire did work out. So that should make you feel better about what you want to do. Uh, there's a little thing here just on his personal life. It says, lifelong Catholic Humperdinck and Patricia Healy wed in 1964. The two, two first met at the Palais de Danse, a nightclub in Leicester. They had four children, Scott, Jason, Louise, and Bradley, and, and the family lived between homes in the UK and Southern California. Humperdinck's wife once said that she could paper their bedroom with all the paternity lawsuits <laughs> filed against her husband. He successfully sued for paternity by two women during the 70s and 80s. In 2017, the singer revealed that Patricia had been suffering from Alzheimer's disease for 10 years. She died in Los Angeles on February 5th, 2021, after contracting COVID-19, that, that fake disease that nobody ever got sick from. Okay, thank you, sorry about that, but I had a number of friends die from this, so I st and we're still taking it seriously out here. Uh, Humperdinck later described how the family had prayed in, with her and, and blessed her with water from Lourdes before she slipped softly away. Uh, Humperdinck retains firm ties with Le Leicestershire, where he spent much of his youth and is a keen uh, fan of Leicester City FC. Uh, in August 2005, he auctioned one of his Harley Davidson motorcycles on eBay to raise money for the county air ambulance in Leicester. At Leicestershire. In 2006, the University of Leicester awarded Humperdinck an honorary doctorate of music. On 25th of February 2009, Leicester City Council announced that Humperdinck would be given the honorary Freedom of Leicester along author Sue Townsend and former professional footballer Alan Bershnail. Uh, in 2010, Humperdinck was one of the first of nine people to be honored with a plaque on the Leicester Walk of Fame. So that's kind of what's gone. He's also been active in real estate investments in Hawaii, Mexico, and the mainland U.S. The latter half of the 70s, the singer brought the Pink Palace in Los Angeles 
previously the home of Jane Mansfield. In 22, he sold the mansion to developers during the 80s. And Humbert Inc. bought a hotel property in La Paz, Mexico, and renamed it La Posada de Engelbert. The hotel flourished for a time, acquired a reputation as an off-the-beaten-path gem. In later years, however, his ownership of the property was successfully challenged. The hotel was demolished in 2012 and replaced by the Posada Hotel Beach Club. Humbert Inc. was appointed member of the Order of the, Order of the British Empire, an MBE, in 2021, um, birthday honors for services for his services to music. Okay, but there's tons and tons about his, his life. So I'm going to get back to the music I did with him. We did a move, uh, uh, an album in 1996 called After Dark. Uh, it was produced by Steve Gibson and engineered by Gustavo Borner. Um, Gustavo, whenever I would work with uh, David Foster, generally Gustavo was the uh, engineer on, on so much of that stuff. I think it was Gustavo on that. Maybe not. That, that might be a mistake on my part. Ah, what the hell? Let's forget that. Let's not worry about that. Um, let me uh, jump over here to some credits on this album. Okay, so the album is After Dark. And I'm going to go through a list of credits here because everybody deserves credits. Um, I'll just read straight down. Glenn Allen, composer. Tommy Barnes, composer. Terry Bates, assistant engineer. Eddie Bayer's drums. Ed Bershoff, composer. Jason Bloom, assistant producer. Gustavo Borner, engineer, mixing. Etta Britt, vocals background. Alex Brown, vocals background. Marty Brown, composer. David Bryant, a mixing assistant. Bob Bullock, engineer. Uh, Carl Carwell, background vocals. I shared bass uh, duties on this album with Joe Chimay. Uh Pat Coyle on keyboards and piano. Hal David, composer. Mark Dreyer, composer. Mike Eldred. Tom Flora, background vocals. Steve Gibson, acoustic guitar and electric guitar and producer. Mark Gray, composer. Stephanie Hall, background vocals. Mike Haynes, horn. Tom Hemby, on guitar, uh, that's great, Engelbert Humperdinck, liner notes, primary artist and vocals, uh, Jessica Williams, background vocals, Mike Jones, composer, Archie Jordan, composer, uh, Mary Beth Jordan, background vocals, Hilary Cantor, composer, background vocals, Tom K, keyboards, Gordon Kennedy, composer, Jerry Kimbrough, acoustic and electric guitar, Billy Kirsch, composer, Jackson Leap, composer, Paul Lime, drums and keyboards, uh, Sam Levine, horn, uh, Anthony Little, composer, or is that Little Anthony? Who knows? Amara, uh, da, da, da. Chris McDonald, horns and horn arrangements, Jerry McPherson, electric guitar, Michael Mellett, vocals, the Nashville String Machine, J.P. Pennington, composer and guitar, uh, Kilt Reeves, composer, Bob Regan, composer, Steve Rosen, synthesizer, um, Beverly Ross, composer, Erie Sanders, overdubs, Rick Shermer, uh, engineer for overdubs, to uh, Toby Say, overdubs, um, Leland, S S how do you, I don't know how you pronounce this, Sc Sc Sclair, Sclair, I don't know, on bass, uh, Tommy Smith, composer, Jason um, Saluto, assistant producer, even Stevens, producer and composer, uh, Jill Tengen, mixing assistant, Michael Thompson on guitar, George Tidwell on horns, Phil Vassar, composer, Bergen White did the string arrangements, Hugh Williams, composer, Richard Williams, son, uh, composer, and Jerry Scott Wills, saxophone. So, you know, whenever you see this, it's kind of like, see, you can go see a movie that's got three characters in it, like a real intimate, like like my dinner with Andre or something like that, where just two guys basically talking for the whole movie. Yet, boy, at the end, the credits start rolling. There's so many people involved in all these albums that I work on. For the most part, the cast of people involved is so extensive compared to what you're hearing sometimes. Um, and everybody, I feel, always deserves their, their just recognition because without even one of them, it could have turned out very differently. So, so I'm going to jump into a little music right now. This one is called If I Could Love You More. That's the way I feel about all of you out there. You know, that's kind of creepy, isn't it? Okay, I'll, just, I'll, I'll stay back. I'll have a little, 
little mixture of saltpeter while we're listening to this. So here we go. Engelbert Humperdinck, If I Could Love You More. It's a balladeer day. If I could love you more Than with every breath I take That's what I would do If I could love you more Than asleep or wide awake I would do that too If I could love you more Than with all Till the whole world fades away If such a thing could be true Then I would love you more than I do If I could just possess Only one thing in this world I'd say I want you To bring you happiness There is nothing in this world That I would not do If I could love you more Than forever and a day Going on and on In this life and then beyond If such a thing could be true then I would love you more than I do the great Hal David and Archie Jordan. I loved Hal. I became really good friends with Hal towards the end of his life. And uh, what a beautiful, beautiful soul. And what a great writer. The, the songs that Hal David and Burt Bacharach wrote are just some of the greatest songs of contemporary music. So here we go. Let's, let's find another one here. Let's see if I get some credit for this one. Well, this is called Once in a While. Now, again, the album's After Dark, but this one's called Once in a While. Here we go. One thing, i interrupt there before you get started. He, he reminds me a lot. I, I also had the great fortune of working with the wonderful B.J. Thomas. And there's a similarity in there, in the timbers and some of the phrasing they do. That As soon as I was listening to this, I went, oh, B.J., I remember that. That was really good. So here we go. Clouds have all lifted a new day has broken the rain in the memories and the ashes are all that remain. I survived another year. Old. 
Got great pipes. Yeah, it's like it's one of those things. Like when you would, like when I was younger, and you'd hear the name Engelbert Humperdinck, and you'd kind of think it was kind of like a kind of silly and all that. But when you listen to what he's doing, he's really a great singer. Here's what he got. Let's see. I think it is. And big. Let me see what I got here. Let me do this one. Oh. This one's called There's No Song Like a Slow Song. Never before 
what? Say you say you a slow right. dance. Just for me. I'll save you a dance, Engelbert. Don't worry. And that's it. I love when they do a narration. It's like old R&B tongue songs. You know, you hear the things cranking all of a sudden. Darling, I love you. And these guys go on with this great narration. And then sometimes it goes into a modulation. It's, it's a trip. Um, Engelbert Humperdinck. You know, and I completely forgot about this. I just dug it up. And uh, there's like, like, I'm finding like tons of stuff. that Because uh, when I look at the Wikipedia page, it's probably about a little less than half of the projects I've done. So it's like there's still like all this forensics you end up going through trying to find things. It's a complicated process. Um, but I'm going to wish everybody the best. My, again, like I said, my, my thoughts are with the Picaro family. It's on, on Mike's birthday, which would, would he, I wished he was here today to celebrate it. I loved Mike. I miss him a lot. Um, and uh, I'm just going to get to other projects. I think I'm going to go clean my kitchen floor now. You know, a woman's work's never done, like I said. And I, 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 when it comes down to taking care of my house, I touch my feminine side. Not literally, you know, it's okay. Um, been having fun, been doing a bunch of cameos lately, and that's always fun to send off birthday wishes and stuff. And I got a bunch of book orders to fill, so everything's chugging along here, and then I'm going to... Uh, so I'm going to get going, and I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're in the studio, uh, working on a project for two days, and then I'm with, on the first, I'm in the studio with Herb Peterson, who I absolutely love, Herb. And so that'll be fun to be in with him for a, uh, a day. So lots going on, and I'm going to do it whether anybody wants me or not. I'll show up, okay? Okay, so I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.